Tay-K, the now 19-year-old rapper from Arlington, Texas, has one of the wildest stories in recent hip-hop. After developing a solid local buzz for himself, Tay-K made a series of bad decisions that ultimately led to his downfall. Those bad decisions left Tay-K in a jail cell for 23 hours a day, all while his music was going viral and making him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Curious what got Tay-K in this situation? Well, then we got you covered. Here is an exclusive inside look at the criminal history of Tay-K. Now, before we get started on this, I just want to ask you guys to follow my Twitter, at Pluggy underscore. I'll be tweeting daily, posting updates for this channel, and also discussing hip-hop-related topics as well. Once again, that's at P-L-U-G-G-Y underscore on Twitter. Tay-K's legal troubles allegedly began years ago when he was really young, but not much has been confirmed. So, for the sake of this video, we're just going to go over his legal situations that have been confirmed by the authorities and the media. The first situation happened on July 26, 2016 in Mansfield, Texas. According to reports, Tay-K, along with six other associates, planned to set up and rob a 21-year-old drug dealer named Ethan Walker at his home on the 1500 block of Aspen Court. Two females named Megan Holt and Ariana Barat allegedly went to Walker's home to distract him and then proceeded to let Tay-K and the other assailants into his home. Inside the home, a fight broke out, which led to Ethan Walker getting shot and killed. Zachary Belote was also shot, but fortunately survived. Authorities later arrested the group, and Tay-K was charged with capital murder. Since Tay-K was only 16 at the time, the judge placed him on house arrest while he waited for his trial. Tay-K was on house arrest for about eight months, with little to no updates on his trial. The last update Tay-K had received was a pending certification hearing to determine whether or not he would be tried as an adult. All the stress stemming from his case must have gotten to him, because on March 26, 2017, Tay-K tweeted, Fuck this house arrest shit. Fuck one too, they're gonna have to catch me on hood. Moments after this tweet, Tay-K cut off his ankle monitor and went on the run to New Jersey. After being on the run from federal authorities for a little over three months, Tay-K was eventually captured in an affiliate's home in Elizabeth, New Jersey on June 30th, 2017. But moments before he was captured, Tay-K sent out a tweet saying, Feds can't hold me back. Here it go, Tay-K. The race. Music video. Hashtag free Tay-K. Hashtag free Santana. Hashtag free Pimpsy. Inside the tweet was a link to a music video for his song, The Race. The music video contained wild visuals of Tay-K flashing guns, smoking weed, and throwing up gang signs, all while taunting authorities. One of the scenes even showed him lighting up a blunt in front of his own wanted poster. The music video immediately goes extremely viral, all while Tay-K is in the custody of the U.S. Marshals. Days later, details are finally released to the public about Tay-K's legal troubles. According to authorities, while already on the run for capital murder charges, police believe that Tay-K robbed, shot, and killed a 23-year-old man named Mark Saldivar at a Chick-fil-A in San Antonio. Witnesses say that multiple men were arguing in an SUV when one of the men, Mark Saldivar, got out of the vehicle and began to scream for help. While screaming for help, another passenger that authorities believed to be Tay-K got out and shot him. The group then left the scene while Saldivar was on the ground dying from the gunshot wound. Authorities also claim that Tay-K attacked a 65-year-old man at a park in Arlington, Texas. Those two incidents led to Tay-K being charged with two additional crimes on top of his capital murder charge. The first being the charge for the murder, the second one being aggravated assault. Tay-K was then extradited back to Texas. After being in jail for two months, the judge determined that Tay-K will be tried as an adult for his capital murder charges. Tay-K's lawyer, Trent Lofton, later released a statement saying, the judge ruled that this case should be moved to the adult court based on his age and the fact that the juvenile court will lack jurisdiction soon. The judge was very clear to tell Mr. McIntyre on the record that this decision has no bearing whatsoever on his guilt slash innocence in this case. Mr. McIntyre remains upbeat after this hearing. Months passed and there were still little to no updates on Tay K's situation. That was until February 23rd, 2018, when it was made public that one of the female accomplices in the Ethan Walker murder case got sentenced to 20 years in prison. Prosecutors claimed that the unnamed girl, who was 17 at the time of the murder, masterminded the entire thing. A few weeks after that announcement, another update was made in Tay-K's case, and it wasn't a good one. 
On March 28, 2018, the judge announced that he is denying bond for Tay K and released a statement as well. His statement reads, I don't know how many people are supposed to die, and I don't know why we, as a country, seem to glorify bad acts by putting out records and videos and people are following in this. It's my understanding that people throughout this country have free take a signs or go-to funds to fund his defense, and this court has a problem with that. I don't know what this country has become when people can go out and allegedly commit heinous crimes and be glorified for it. And I think it's clear that Judge Wayne Salvant is not a big fan of Tay Kay. Tay Kay then continued to sit in jail. While in jail, rumors circulated that Tay Kay will be facing the death penalty, but his manager, Ezra Avril, put those rumors to rest on May 23, 2018 in an Instagram post where he said, oh yeah, and ain't no death penalty over here, hashtag free Tay Kay. Then, less than a month later, Tay Kay was sued by the family of Mark Saldivar. The family's attorney stated that they are seeking over a million dollars in damages from Tay Kay. It was also made public a little over a month after that announcement that the family of Ethan Walker also filed a lawsuit against Tay Kay, seeking more than a million dollars in damages as well. The families were specifically suing Tay Kay for signing a record deal that they claim he only got due to his alleged crime spree. A financial report submitted to the judge revealed that while locked up, Tay Kay signed a record deal with 88 Classic that earned him six to $700,000. Tay Kay also made over $236,000 from the race, which went platinum a month after he signed his record deal. The lawsuit stated that, McIntyre was encouraged and or manipulated by his manager and 88 Classic Records to commit crimes in order to promote the sale of his music. No other updates have been released. A few days after the news about the lawsuit, Tay K was charged with possession of a prohibited substance while awaiting his trial in Tarrant County Jail. Reports say that one of the guards found a cell phone tucked in Tay K's socks during a search. This caused Tay K to be transferred to a maximum security jail, where he is placed in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day. The media also claims that an altercation with another inmate also played a role in Tay K's relocation. Around the same time of all this, it was revealed that the other female, Ariana Barat, entered a plea deal that states that if she pleads guilty to aggravated robbery and agrees to testify against her three co-defendants, that she will get a 25-year prison sentence. This is bad for Tay Kay, because it means that during his trial, she will take the stand and basically has to snitch on Tay Kay. But the last year, all the updates on Tay Kay have just been some minor stuff. Like, for example, Tay Kay posted a picture of himself in his cell on Instagram, pretty much hinting that he got his hands on another cell phone at the new maximum security prison. He also must have made some new friends, because he allegedly started a gang in prison called the Rugrats. But beside that, not much has really been said about his trial or sentencing. Rumors stated that Tay Kay's trial would begin on June 17th, 2019, but that apparently got pushed back to September of 2019 now. It was also made public that the 65-year-old man who was allegedly attacked by Tay Kay while on the run is now suing him as well with the same reasoning as the other two lawsuits against Tay Kay. I feel like I should also note that everyone involved has been sentenced but Tay Kay. As I mentioned earlier, the two females took plea deals that gave them 20 and 25 years in prison. The three other associates got sentenced as well, with Pimpies getting 30 years, Sean Robinson getting 40 years, and Letharian Merritt getting life in prison without parole. Overall, it's not looking good for Tay Kay. Well, there you have it, the entire criminal history of Tay Kay. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the like button and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. Also, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we upload. If you have any suggestions on who we should do a criminal history video on next, then leave a comment down below, or you can tweet at Pluggy underscore on Twitter. That's all I have for today. I'm out. So I just want to ask you guys to follow my Twitter at Pluggy underscore. I'll be tweeting daily, posting updates for this channel, and also discussing hip hop related topics as well. Once again, that's at P-L-U-G-G-Y underscore on Twitter.